The Russian engineer and amateur of radio electronics, Vladimir Polyakov, designed this circuit at the beginning of 1990s. It was the result of numerous experiments. The circuit has been repeated many times. I've also built it. It is optimal in its simplicity and ease of adjustment, and it gives good results. A VTY transistor is connected to an active or inductive oscillator. The contour of the oscillator consists of a coil L1 and a capacitor C1. The coil tap is near the base connection. In this way, the high output resistance of the transistor in the collector circuit and the lower input resistance of the base circuit are coordinated. The feed circuit of the transistor is somewhat unusual. The DC voltage at its base is the same as the voltage at the collector. A transistor, especially one made of silicon, can easily work in this mode. It is on the voltage at the base relatively to the emitter is about 0.5 volt and the saturation collector emitter voltage is within the range of 0.2 to 0.4 volts, depending on the transistor type. In this particular circuit, the collector and the DC base are connected with a common wire. The feed comes from the emitter circuit through the resistors indicated by R1. The voltage of the emitter automatically stabilizes at the level of 0.5 volt. The transistor acts as a voltage reference diode with a stated stabilizing voltage. Indeed, if the voltage of the, of the emitter drops, the transistor will be off. The current of the emitter will become lower and then the voltage drop in the resistor will also become lower. As a result, the emitter's voltage will start growing and if it rises, the transistor will turn on again. The increased voltage drop of the resistor will compensate for this increase. There is one necessary condition for the device to work properly. The feed voltage must be considerably higher, over 1.2 volts. Then you will be able to adjust the transistor current by choosing the resistor, R1. Let's look how it works at a high frequency. The voltage of the bottom, see the diagram, turns off the coil, L1 is applied to the base emitter connection of the transistor, Vt1. The latter amplifies this voltage. The high frequency current bypass capacitor C2 has a low resistance. The resonant resistance of the contour acts as the load for the circuit. It is somewhat decreased due to the transformation done by the top part of the coil. Amplification causes the transistor to invert the signal phase. Then it is inverted by the transformer, made up by parts of the coil L1. Thus the phases are balanced. As a result, the amplitude balance necessary for order excitation is achieved when the transistor is sufficiently amplified. The oscillation threshold is approached slowly. Besides, adjustments are done in a low-frequency circuit, the supply circuit. This means the contour control can be moved away from the contour. The device can create waves ranging from long to ultra-short. The coil L1 doesn't have to be in the contour. You can use a coupling coil. In this case, you will need the capacitor. VT1 transistors output the emitter. The signal is then sent to the radio frequency amplifier over the blocking capacitor C3 with a capacitor of 0.1 to 0.5 microfarad. When picking up signals of AM station, this receiver has a sensitivity of up to 30 microvolts. When it receives beat telegraph signals, the sensitivity was several microvolts. I can tell from my own experience that using such a device with a good antenna, I could pick up the radio station from the Middle East. That is why I can recommend that you should also build this device.